Magandang araw po mga ka uh, Welcome to the MSME Digitox Accelerating Competitiveness through Digital Transformation. So, I am Jaworski Riparial from the MSME Development and we are back for another interesting and informative session. So, today po, Uh, ako po muna ang inyong host and facilitator for this episode. Unang-una po, maraming salamat po sa inyong patuloy na pagsama sa aming virtual, I amin mean virtually at ngayon po, 6 episode na ng ating MSME Digitox. Kalain po natin, no? So almost malapit na po tayo dun sa finish line. So uh, first, uh, we would like to acknowledge po our regional persons DTI colleagues, and business counselors who continuously assist our MSMEs and support our activities on digitalization. So sila po yung katulong natin dito sa head office to implement our efforts on digitalization. And of course, we would like to acknowledge our MSMEs, kayo pong aming mga, mga bida po dito sa ating uh, Digitox who are participating here. Right now, for, thank you so much po for being here with us. Your presence is a declaration of your interest to learn more about digitalization. So, alam naman po natin, no? Yung digitalization, it's the way to go. Uh, right now, there are about uh, 70 packs, no? Continuously po siya dumadami. So, we hope uh, makakapture po tayo ng more participants in this episode. So as always, uh, we are uh, greatly uh, thankful that you are choosing to spend time with us every Thursday afternoon. Maraming maraming salamat po sa patuloy ninyong pagsuporta, pagtangkilik, pagsubaybay sa ating Digitox. Ngayon po ay uh, ang ating ika-anim na episode po no? that would focus on uh, in-demand IT services and tools. So gusto lang po namin uh, mas acknowledge ang ating mga MSMEs. So paki-type in po sa ating chat chat box kung saan probinsya po kayo nanonood ngayong hapon at kung naka ilang episode na po ba kayo ng Digitox. For example po, uh, ako po ita-type ko po bukid noon kama 5 episodes para makita po natin kung karamihan po ba natin. So marami pong nagta-type na naka Nakakakompleto na po sila no so yung nasa chat box po natin six episode na po pero meron pong nasa Pangasinan yung first episode no kumbaga uh, anyway hindi naman po huli pa yung lahat uh, we hope that the succeeding uh, uh, episodes will be able to at least uh, help pa rin po kayo no provide information so marami five six So halo-halo po tayo, may from Antique, Sambuanga City, Oriental Mindoro, Bulacan, from Sorsogon, first time po, welcome po dito, Ilocos Sur, Sambuanga Sibugay, and the others. So uh, yan po, uh, uh, ayan, sobrang active ng ating mga participants today. Stay tuned lang po mga ka-digitox dahil madami-dami tayong matututunan ngayong hapon na ito. Dapat siguro wag na natin patagalin pa. Unang-una, ano nga po ba ang uh, ulit ang MSME Digitox? So again, for those who have just tuned in, no, yung mga participants natin like yung from Sorsogon, we would like to inform you that the MSME Digitox, uh, yung objective niya po is to push forward the digitalization agenda of the DTI to improve the business operations, competitiveness, and resilience of MSMEs through information sessions like this. So uh, on topics most needed by MSMEs to thrive in the digital world. So napaka-crucial po ng mga information na makukuha natin sa ating mga digital talks. So to give us a recap, may we show you the topics discussed on the previous episodes. No? Baga ira-rantro lang po natin. So yung sa mga first time po, eto na po yung mga na-discuss natin yung mga five episodes. So yung first episode po natin, we were able to focus on productivity tools that, uh, that 
wherein we have invited several speakers. No, yung isa po galing po from the government side, from the Department of Information and Communications Technology, the ICT, na nag-discuss po ng mga projects nila supporting digital development. We also have uh, invited our partner, no, yung Peddler Philippines and Zales, no, who focus on uh, the business processing, featuring the different available technological tools, specifically for digital sales, digital marketing, and digital finance. Yung week two po natin, uh, yung second episode, we have presented the digital payment tools wherein, wherein we invited or a speaker from the Banco Central ng Pilipinas na nag-discuss po on the different or various digitalization program activities. We also invited uh, two uh, platform provider, no, yung Just Pay 2, na, na nagpo-provide po ng contactless payments and MasterCard, which presented po yung challenges ng, ng, uh, ng mga MSMEs tulad po ninyo in managing and growing their business. At saka yun, nagbigay din po sila ng cyber security tips. For our week, week 3 po, yung third episode, ang focus po ng ating discussion during that time is yung lending apps and tools for business, which is finding available financing opportunities and resources to help MSME scale up. So nag-invite po tayo ng speaker from the Small Business Corporation, which is an attached agency of the DPI. Then Invest3, which is a crowdfunding uh, platform. Then Credit BPO, which uh, give emphasis on the credit rating no, na kailangan po nating mga MSMEs. Especially when we are applying for different uh, additional capital from different sources. Tapos yung fourth episode po natin, uh, focus on the e-commerce tools and trends such as the promising online shopping sites. no na pinak uh, na napaka popular po ngayon at the same time uh, opportunity for MSMEs like you po to expand your coverage yung market reach po natin so nag-invite po tayo from DOST na nag-discuss ng kanilang uh, one store application no uh, which is an online marketing platform for local entrepreneurs so we also invited Apigo and Shopboxo, an, uh, an e-commerce solution provider and an online mobile store builder. So yung last week po natin, medyo maganda rin po yung naging discussion natin. No? Ang naging focus naman po nun is enterprise resource planning or yung mga different softwares that can manage day-to-day -day business operation no? uh, like yung sa accounting, procurement, project management, and the others. So, naging, uh, naging speaker po natin ay Britana Global Solution and Store Hub and Tinbio Philippines. So, before we uh, proceed po, no, may we request again everyone to turn on their cameras for a virtual picture-taking opportunity. So, aside from uh, seeing your beautiful smile, maganda rin pong opportunity ito para makita po natin yung ating fellow participants. So, Ang Digitox po, eh, hindi lang po opportunity for us to learn but also to network. No? I think ng mga previous episodes po, nakikita ko po yung sa mga chat box. May mga, mga MSMEs po no? na mga partner na mga katulad po ninyo nag-uusap at nagkokontakan na po directly para sa kanya-kanyang mga different needs or uh, 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 potential po for matchmaking so nag nag-uusap-usap na po uh, so may i request the assistance of our tech team in capturing the beautiful smiles tech team thank you very much no for sharing your smile so right now we have 81 participants in our uh, zoom meeting so may I also remind everyone po to fill out the attendance for today's session. So makikita nyo po ang ating attendance, uh, the link in the chat box. And again, we remind that certificates will be issued as long as you will be able to attend at least four sessions and have completed to fill out the customer satisfaction 
which will be posted later on. So nandyan po, you, you can see uh, the QR code for our attendance sheet, including the link. So uh, do we have participants here who have already attended at least four sessions? No? Kanina, marami na. Uh, some, five, six. And we also request that uh, you accomplish our attendance sheet for today. So the, uh, we will be issuing the certificates through your regional focal person. So uh, we will just process the attendance. So for, for this day, uh, activity po, or yung program, uh, we can see na medyo, we, we are medyo full pack po. No? Med, yung, yung topics po natin, as mentioned, would focus on on-demand on IT services and tools. So before we call our first speaker, we have prepared a short poll. So similar to our uh, episode last week, uh, we want to get your insights on simple uh, questions. So you can uh, answer this poll by going to www.menti.com and type the code uh, 8187-9273. So our question for this uh, episode is, uh, since uh, majority of us were able to attend at least four uh, Digitalks, can we now answer this question if, uh, if I am open to digitalizing my business, you may answer agree, disagree, or cannot decide. So all you have to do is uh, answer that poll. So later on, we will show the, the result of that Mentimeter poll. And you may also click on the link of the poll in our chat box. So to start with our uh, first speaker, uh, we have invited our resource person from the Amazon Web Services Philippines. Uh, one of the most uh, comprehensive uh, and broadly adopted cloud platform offering 200 fully featured services from data centers globally. Also millions of customers, including the fastest growing startups, largest enterprises and leading government agencies are using their services in order to lower costs, become more agile, and innovate faster. Uh, uh, our first speaker has a Bachelor of Science in Information Systems Technology and a Master of Science in Computer Information Systems. He previously worked as an infrastructure architect, life block manager, systems engineer, ID analytics director, network operations, and much more. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is our pleasure to welcome our resource speaker from, for today from the Amazon uh, Web Services. And he will talk about resiliency and productivity in digital age for MSME. Uh, let us welcome Senior Solutions Architect, Mr. Paul Sears. Good afternoon, Mr. Paul. Good afternoon. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, I am going to share my screen now so you can see what we're going to talk about. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to everybody here today, and I hope that uh, everybody will have a chance to learn something new and how they can uh, further um, take their businesses and organizations uh, digitally and go and moving into the future. So um, the topic that I'm going to cover is uh, going to be about resiliency and productivity, productivity when you are now in the digital age. And this is going to be focused on small and medium enterprises, or now we say micro, um, small, medium enterprises. So it, it's really um, going to cover everybody uh, out here, hopefully on, on this uh, on this presentation, on, on attending this session here. So um, let me go ahead and get started first. As you mentioned about myself, I'll go ahead and just move quickly past this. But I've been in AWS uh, for six and a half years, uh, and I've been in the Philippines for almost four years. I can't believe it's been that long. Uh, I arrived before the pandemic, and I 
was in the pandemic for uh, quite a while. And then uh, now that it works, it's nice to be out back and doing business face to face with customers and even sometimes doing these events virtually. But uh, so we're going to be focusing on some of the, the, the trends we have seen because um, prior to pandemic, um, uh, many companies were not even not really focused on 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 the a digital approach or how to accelerate or transform into uh, a digital uh, approach for their businesses. But the pandemic kind of changed everything. Uh, when we had to, we no longer can meet face to face. We had our businesses restricted, and who can who can actually visit our locations? So we had to present ourselves, our organizations, um, in a different manner, and had to engage our customers through a digital platform. And we learned a lot from this. Um, this was a global event, and this um, it, it was it just you know every, it, it hit everybody across the world. And so a lot of trends we learned from this, and. Um, this is a little background. Um, SME, especially uh, especially in Philippines, you are it. You are the backbone of what happens in this country, in this region, right? So you're, it's totally um, what we want to focus on and help you uh, to um, – to be successful in your digital transformation. I, my role at AWS is to support uh, uh, SMEs uh, right now, MSMEs uh, for uh, you know, working with customers on helping them find solutions and helping them figure out ways to make that transformation. So um, you are the backbone for what's going on here. And obviously, um, a lot of things are going to happen when you accelerate your transformation because when you're doing things a more traditional way, you don't have access to a lot of new innovative solutions that can help transform the access you have, information, the data processing you have, how to reach your customers, how to um, increase your agility and lower your costs, um, and, and also to uh, explore things like data analytics and, and AI and ML uh, to differentiate your organization from um, other companies that you may be competing against. So um, some of the trends we've seen, and, and this is actually uh, data we've collected during uh, the pandemic. And this is some of the things I think is very interesting is that uh, obviously, um, more people are going to web stores, you know, e-commerce platforms because they were forced to during the pandemic. They had no choice to procure their goods and services, but to go online because we were not able to go face to face. Uh, and so um, we're also looking at uh, a new a new shift. So one of the trends that came out of the pandemic was this buy online a pickup in store type of a, of, a, of, a, of a transaction. So you have online sales with delivery to your house, or you'd have this a set of sales where you go in ha and, and buy it online through a digital mark, a digital web store, but then you would actually drive to location and pick it up. Uh, we saw a huge growth in that. And, and some customers actually like that model, right? So be, this is all part of the things you should be considering for your digital transformation. And then, um, Mobile commerce is, uh, is a huge part of online sales. So we all have our phones. We do a lot of things on our phones. You cannot ignore that segment of market. You should be building a complete platform uh, that can address uh, all, all kinds of customer engagements. And then something else that came out as, as well is that there's a lot of development in voice interactions. And so some customers... Um, have shopped with uh, using a voice technology, interacting through a voice system or something to do their purchases. Uh, and they seem to be a trend increasing at that as well. So uh, some of the priorities that we saw in 20, for 2021, uh, you want to um, increase your customer lifetime value. You want basically you want to focus on the customer experience. Uh, and you want to... Um, to, to really, how do you demonstrate this? You know, your transition is going to, going to give you some metrics. You have some priorities you're going to focus on that allow you to show that the transformation you're making is going to have impact, right? And there are some things you want to focus on when you're looking at your transformation. Um, fundamentally, site performance really matters. Um, and uh, you want to make sure that you are able to retain your customers uh, when you... Um, when you, when, you, when you engage them and customers do have a lower tolerance now for waiting than they used to. When they realize when they shifted to online, they're expecting uh, better performance, better responsiveness, a better engagement. So um, things you want to think about versus how things were done and normal traditional face-to-face uh, -face or brick and mortar type engagement. Um, 
75% of our SMB C digital integration is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for all of you to really excel in what you're doing in your markets and your segments and to differentiate yourself. 80% uh, of businesses have increased their presence for online. We're, we're forced to do so because of, of the pandemic and such. But um, think about where, where you are through the pandemic and what your organization has done already uh, to meet the new demands. So, um, how can you become a digital SME? What do you do for technology to help accelerate your business and reach your customers and really build their customer experience? So we all, we have, all have the same goals. We want more top line revenue. We want to increase profit. We want to uh, access new markets and customers and want to engage and, and have engaged and productive employees, right? Those are all common goals. Um, and with the with technology adoption, you can actually just see some real value um, that you can measure, me real measured value uh, as we're such as a, a definite growth in top line revenue, um, you have more cl employee collaboration, et cetera. So um, when you go SMB to digital SMB, you think about all aspects of the relationship of a customer. So before when you had marketing, maybe, sorry, when you had customer engagement, you focus on uh, some kind of marketing, a billboard, an ad, uh, uh, a message somewhere. But now you're looking at omni-channel, a, a, a mobile way, uh, sorry, multiple ways of engaging customers to different mechanisms, such as mobile devices and, uh, you know, um, emails and um, even sometimes like digital phone calls and stuff. So you have a whole ways to do this. You also want to uh, go through, try, make sure you're discoverable. Customers can find you. What is your e-commerce platform? How do you put product how do you um, improve your productivity and infra solutions? And how do you modernize using analytics and AI ML? Okay. So um, one of the things to consider is when you're in uh, cloud adoption is that uh, AWS customers have received a, a lower cost of spend per user. Um, so when you start to think about some of the scale and efficiencies, uh, you can actually lower some of your costs over time in a measurable way. So some considerations for cloud um, that you want to think about when you're doing this is that you have some drivers, obviously, for your digital solutions. But you also have some challenges as well. Security is everybody's concern, right? We want to make sure that what we do and transactions are going to be uh, delivered and handled in a secure manner. Um, integration can be challenging. Maybe the skill sets are also a challenge that your organization fails. How do you become, how do you make that transformation to become a digital organization, right? How do you do that? Or maybe you don't have, part of, you don't have enough time and, and, and budget to do so. These are some of the things you want to think about uh, fundamentally is that um, how do you enable and, and your organization to address this? Okay. So when you're looking at AWS cloud, um, we, we actually mentioned some of the things here. One other, other thing to think about as well is decrease in downtime. When, you ha when, you're, when you're engaging customers now, they have changed their perspective. They want to have um, their transaction uh, to to be completed in a timely fashion when they when they initiate it. They don't want to wait. They don't want to uh, visit your website and have your website down because they'll go somewhere else, right? Uh, as other customers, as other companies, organizations also become digitally um, transformed, they're going to have the same event. You're going to get some advantages that you are trying to get yourself. So uh, you need to think about how you manage your presence. And downtime is a very important thing. So some benefits of cloud computing. Um, it's delivery of IT resources over the internet. It's pay-as-you-go pricing. So basically, you're only paying uh, for what you use when you use it. Okay, It's kind of like a utility like you would have for your Morocco or other power company. When you turn off your light switch, you don't pay anymore for your power. When you turn it on, you pay for what you use. So it's very similar to that. Um, when you have uh, investments, um, Basically, when you're doing uh, an on-premise environment or maybe a hosted solution, you typically have a large upfront capital investment. When you're moving into a cloud provider, um, you're going to have lower costs because you don't have to purchase a large amount of infrastructure. Initially, you can subscribe to what you need over a period of time and you have a lower, but your costs will be variable. It does shift from CapEx to OpEx. And that is a challenge for some organizations uh, for sure, but there are ways to address that. And you'll see some additional value from that when you make that transition. And my slide didn't move. Okay. Uh, and so... Um, 
So when you when you move to a cloud model, you're actually able to transform faster. Innovation is going to be the key. It's going to be the key for you to engage your customers. Customers care about their experience more than anything now, right now, and they're not satisfied. They 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 want they, if they're not satisfied, they'll go somewhere else. So you want to make sure you you reach your customers, and engage them. Um, there's a company, uh, John Santo, CTO of uh, Echelon Fitness Multimedia. Uh, basically, they have a, they have a same backend system um, that a large large company companies might have as well. So you've accessed the same services and resources as any other company doing it. So how can AWS help you with your journey? So just a little background real so you understand. Whoops. Um, okay, so AWS is a, whoops, I went too far. Sorry, I thought I did, but it's a slow refreshing. Um, AWS is actually a part of Amazon.com, which is a lar one of the world's largest online retailers. Uh, AWS is the cloud computing uh, infrastructure. So uh, we host all the cloud services that Amazon.com is what other customers use to deliver their own goods and services. Okay, so we're we actually have a relationship between Amazon and AWS. We're just we're part of them, but we're also separate in 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 that context. And to why why would you consider maybe AWS? Um, you get some depth and and platform depth and breadth. This is really important for innovation. Your global reach, what if you have customers that are no longer just in country, but now your customers that are uh, going to reach other other markets. Maybe you want to hit uh, markets in other parts of ASEAN or you want to go other parts of the world. So you can reach new markets um, and go global in literally in minutes. Um, and obviously security is enterprise class. So it's uh, really, really um, something we focus on uh, very, very much in AWS. Um, so. Um, we have over 200 plus services. We've reduced our price um, prices to our customers over 85 times. We really focus on lowering costs going on, going forward whenever possible. So, um, uh, and then we had also had uh, less downtime per hours, uh, more reliable, and we have a large global presence. So uh, we actually, uh, as I mentioned before, the costs reductions. Um, customers also, they gain some things. Uh, more efficient IT infrastructure staff. They have less unplanned downtime and they also get more ability to access more features. They can deliver their own products and features uh, faster because of the agility they get access to. So uh, we have a large number of customers, uh, or actually, sorry, uh, many customers, small, medium enterprises in uh, the, you, you'll see around the world and the region. Uh, you're going to see all different ones out here. Um, we have a lot of customers uh, in the Philippines. Not everyone has offered to be a reference, but for example, Concepcion is one of the, the well-known customers here um, that have been very, very uh, forward in talking about their experiences with AWS. And I'm trying to get to my mouse here. There we go. Okay. Uh, so um, we want to help you. Here's some examples of empowering. So Global Sign during a the pandemic, they were able to um, to develop their platform in six months, and they can to generate personalized recommendations for every 15 minutes during an event. Shakey's is a large enterprise customer in the Philippines, um, and they are able to handle five times more traffic and 10 times more transactions by leveraging AWS, the resiliency and scalability they're able to gain from this. And they were kind of forced to during the pandemic. They had to be able to deliver and uh, take online orders now versus uh, in-store uh, transactions. So they had to be forced to be able to handle the, the, the increased demand online uh, to deliver uh, their products to everybody who wanted to order, the, order from them. So how we transform. So first we have a, a whole process here and how you actually begin the, pro, be the begin the transformation journey, digital commerce journey. So first thing is you're actually going to need to get your, your infrastructure migrated to AWS to, um, to just get a steady state. And then you begin a process of modernizing. Um, and when you begin modernizing, you switch from, you switch from, from a monolithic architecture to microservices based to, um, to maybe even go serverless. And then you have visibility into your data. So now you can remove silos. You know, you build data lakes to have a, cent a complete data solution. Um, you you'd be able to, um, to uh, to get a, a more enriched, detailed view of what your customers really are and what they want and what they need. Um, and you can streamline your, your conversions, your experience, you improve their experience. You also can reach different channels such as mobile and social networks and even voice channels. Um, and then you converge everything. So you have on-premises, maybe brick and mortar stores. You can use store for fulfillment or you make it all an integrated seamless experience for your customers, okay? So this is kind of a roadmap for what you'll do for your your transformation journey. 
So um, one thing you think about here is that the contact center is a very big part of this. When you start to engage customers remotely, they need some place no, to interact. They need some way to interact when they uh, uh, have an issue or they want something or they need uh, they need to find information out. And so your digital experience will be that 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 center point. And so you now reach customers in various ways: systems record, compliance, policies. You have uh, questions: how they do things, pay their bills, can they uh, file you know information, those kind of things. So you got to think about the, how you how everything changes, right? So you have a strategy digital modernization strategy here, cloud to core, you would be agile, cost effective, you can increase your conversions, you migrate and modernize, you have your experiences, you develop, you move into alternate channels, and then you fulfill. Okay, so deliver on your brand that you've been building through your, your modernization. So uh, example here of how you can uh, you can build a solution on AWS for reaching your customers. You'll see all these different channels here and services. The idea here, here is that you can actually go through experience engagement through mobile web, shopping e-commerce, uh, hit advertising. Uh, then you can in, and start integrating things like machine learning to build your brand, to personalize the experience. Um, you have analytics for backend data to uh, help you understand what further ways Ways you can you can engage your customer. You also will engage a customer through a 360 view channels, Omni view type channels. You integrate everything into a data lake, and you have different ways of ingest that data, process the data, warehouse the data, distribute data internally, um, and uh, how to build your platform to further engage that in your customers and keep their experience to be the highest experience possible. So how do you do treat and treat and increase your reach? Um, you can increase your conversions. You reach more customers. These are all different things you can do, right? So think, so think about how you engage your customers face to face. How do you do this on an online platform, digital platform? So this is some of the things you'll do here. Think about recommendations and how people can track their items and uh, change their orders and how they actually maybe have questions or complaints. How do you address all those when you're at, at a online thing? So. Your experience, um, initiation, initiation your, your engagement with your customers, how do you reach new customers, how do you deliver on your brand, okay? Um, and there's a number of uh, packages you can use actually for e-commerce. If you don't have anything already, there are a number of vendor, of, pro, of partners who offer solutions you actually can leverage and utilize uh, to help you build these e-commerce solutions. Um, and uh, you'll see things like, uh, you know, all different as aspects of this. And all these partners here can help you find the right solution to help you build, uh, whether you, you know, your digital, help you modernize and build your digital platform to reach your customers, okay? Um, and I'm just gonna move on to the next one because I'm running out of time here. So, um, you know, um, you think about, the one example here, their CDO, um, they're a well-known brand in the Philippines, and they did a big shift to the cloud, um, and they've had a really, really positive experience from doing so. Now, again, this is a large enterprise, but this applies to anybody who's making that transformation journey, um, if you think about this whole thing. So they were able to... Um, to really just leverage what cloud did for them to further, further build their brand, okay? So they had some, a lot of challenges. They had a lot of legacy systems. They had old hardware. They were having a lot of downtime and restorations took a long time to bring systems back up. Um, they, their costs were just too impactful. Every time, every minute they were down, it was impactful. So they did a lift and shift migration of their whole warehouse system from on-premises to, to AWS and help them avoid failure of critical legacy systems. And you're actually able to take that and then transform uh, everything. And so here's an example of a lift and shift where you actually will take your servers and move it into AWS and, and utilize different services. So basically they took everything as it was and just redeployed it in AWS, but gained a lot of things like uh, an innovation through agility, through available services, uh, resiliency that the region provides and stuff. So if you look at the benefit results, they were having two times uh, of downtime per week. They've had no downtime since December, 2020. Um, they were having the time to process was 10 seconds, three minutes. Now it's three to four seconds. And the actual case resolution for IT to solve problems was uh, 150 days, now it's one day. So their productivity, their ability to address their customers, um, the ability to react has significantly increased. And the main thing here is the downtime dropped to zero since they migrated. 
um, and they're going to look at more. They're going to build an entire uh, set of applications on the cloud. Notice here in the center, you see a data lake. So we're going to have all their data. They're going to be able to leverage for things like uh, advanced analytics and AI and machine learning to help enrich those customer experiences. Okay, so how do you increase competitive? One thing you want to do is you want to think about data analytics. Data analytics, know your customers, can really help you um, help you get ahead and get get you differentiate you from your competition. So you want to have a data strategy, and you need to modernize your 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 infrastructure applications. Be, and then you want to use innovation and, and process data with, M, with AI ML uh, and then unify everything. So to tie it all together and, um, and uh, bring it into a single source of truth that you can then uh, do enrichment on and exploration on and learn about what your customers are and what they really want. You'll see here we have a, process, a service called Lakehouse. It kind of helps you manage a whole data lake, pro, data lake uh, that has all your data, but you see all these different things in here that you can collect, third-party data, insights. You can generate insights. You can do structured reporting. You can have automation. All this stuff becomes central to how you manage your data in your organization. Um, you want to connect your customers through through a 360 view. You you basically can act on what customers are doing. You can you know help resolve, uh, reduce your churn. Right. You can you can look for anomalies and behaviors. You can personalize your content, analyze. Then you store all this and you continue to collect all this data. It doesn't stop. It's right. And you get more and more data. You do more analysis. And you figure out new ways to reach those customers in a way that that makes sense for them. Here's an example from one customer, uh, Domino's. They wanted to uh, reduce the pickup and delivery times as demand increase. Um, and so they just, they shifted to a building a machine learning model on Amazon Sage, SageMaker to forecast pizza orders and in, in basically to try to guess, anticipate what they may be requested to order, to deliver. And they wanted to achieve a delivery of 10 minutes or less. Uh, this, is a, this was more of a, of a, of a US-based goal, but the idea was they're able to take the data, analyze it and forecast, predict, or try to predict the behaviors of customers and when they're gonna order and what they're gonna order to pre-build or, pre or think have things staged for faster delivery. Um, and we have uh, a, you basically you can as you build your um, uh, you, you have many ways you actually can add value and, le and leverage uh, things that exist. For example, if you're using AI and AWS, we have a marketplace that lets you look at solutions out there by other companies uh, and um, use their machine learning models to help add value to your organizations, in this case for loyalty programs. Um, so it's a, very, it's, it's a very interesting way you can take, take advantage of innovation as such. Amazon.com itself, the retail they generate 500 peta, sorry, 50 petabytes of data every day. Um, and uh, they have 700,000 analytics jobs a day. Imagine the scale that is, right, for a global organization. So um, they mo moved away from uh, Oracle Data Warehouse, moved into Amazon uh, Redshift and S3-based data lake um, with over 100 petabytes of data being stored. So it's faster, lower costs, uh, able to give a better experience for their customers. Okay, so how can AWS help you with this? Um, we have uh, our SMEs, our, our account managers, people like myself, we can help you with this. Talk to your partners. We have a lot of AWS partners who will be happy to assist with you and, and look at your, uh, look, understand your problem and help you figure out solutions for your problems. And we have a free tier. If you want to try things out, you can go to AWS Amazon.com slash free. And there's some things you can get free for a month or a year, or sometimes it's free forever, depending on how much you use it. Uh, and then we have also a number of solutions that may be available solve some of your problems right now, okay? I do also uh, want to mention a few more things here to build your skills. We have a skills builder. We also have a certification program. We have a lot of partners who offer uh, training and help you grow your skills. And you can also go through AWS Educate um, and, and build your, uh, uh, your, in your team's enablement to help begin, help continue with this um, this transformation, the digital transformation. It doesn't stop. Once you keep doing, you're going to keep modernizing and innovating and going. So you need to keep building your skills. 
Um, and there's other services as well, such as uh, uh, SME Academy. Um, and basically, in summary, you have a momentum shift um, that technology is really accelerating your business transformation. You're kind of, your customers are the center of this. You need to retain your customers, keep them, uh, give them the best experience possible. And the cloud can give you an easier, faster, and cheaper way of doing this. And AWS can help you uh, get the most from the cloud, okay? So uh, that's really it. I do want to mention a couple things real quick. I have two programs that I can talk about. So we have, for SMEs in particular, uh, small and medium enterprises, um, we have a program called Lyft. And Lyft will let you um, leverage AWS. And when you start billing your use of AWS, you'll start receiving credits. Um, and it's a really innovative program for new customers uh, or, or really low spend customers to really grow their businesses on AWS, to really help them innovate and, tra and, and, and transform. And um, the way it kind of works here, you can, see, you can get up to $83,000 of credits uh, to your to usage. And if you need more information, you can actually reach out to us so we can help you with this as well. In addition, as data is also growing, we have a storage promotion as well that lets you get uh, th three free months of storage, um, up to $1,000 worth of storage, um, help you grow your data analytics uh, platforms and such to help you modernize and deliver the most you can value for your, can for your customers, okay? So that's all I have, so thank you for that. So I guess we have, may have some time for some questions. If we have a time, a uh, minute or two. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Paul. Sure. Uh, we appreciate the uh, Amazon Web Services for uh, accommodating and sharing with us the services you offer in assisting the MSMEs uh, by offering the most extensive applications or solutions uh, that makes it faster, easier, and most uh, cost-effective to move our MSMEs existing applications to the cloud. Uh, but before yes. we proceed with the Q&A, let us first show the result of the, our poll earlier. So on the question, I am open to digitalizing my business. Our result, uh, 21 uh, participants mentioned that they, uh, they are open into digitalizing uh, their business today. So... Uh, probably our uh, other the other participants should also try uh, answering our poll. So the first question for 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 uh, that we received uh, pertaining to the services of AWS is that what programs does AWS have to support our micro or MSMEs in their cloud adoption journey? Considering that majority of the, especially in the Philippines, that majority of the MSM, uh, the the businesses are belongs to the micro sector. Sure, great, and I I, I kind of mentioned some of those uh, programs already, but prim fun, primarily we have some funding programs. We have many actual ways to help you transition your business from a traditional architecture infrastructure into a cloud-enabled infrastructure. Um, and one of those programs that I mentioned earlier is called uh, AWS Lyft. And it lets you, um, as you deploy your services, your workloads, it will provide you credits against your spend. So you can, as you spend more, you'll get more credits and it helps offset some of the costs of operating your workloads in the clouds um, and how you can be, not worry so much about how much you're spending on the cloud oh, while you're doing transformation and then um we also have um a number of programs as well if you're migrating your from on-premises into aws we have some migration programs that can definitely help you with um you know off managing those costs or reducing those costs uh, and to get in to do, do transitions we if you want to try a small workload a poc you can do so by, and we can offer some credits to help you offset some of your costs as well so that you can see what is how well it works for you Okay, thank you for that. For the next question, uh, I am an, a micro business. How much should I invest in my digitalization uh, initiatives uh, from becoming an MSME to be a digital MSME? And where would where do I start? Um, that's a great question. Um... I don't really know the right 
say how much you should invest. You need to you need to invest what makes sense for what your customers need. In my experience, and I and I think Amazon will also support this because we we focus so much on the customer experience, right? And so um, what you need to do, what it takes to retain your customers, that's what matters. And so. Um, uh, there's not really a hard number I can say you spend. I can't say a percentage of it. I think it takes it may it really depends on where you are already in your journey. If you're brand into your journey and you have a legacy architecture, you're gonna need to spend a little bit of effort and 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 money to transform. But once you make a transformation, the ability to innovate really increases and you'll find that your cost per uh, of customer, you know, how you retain them, how you manage them, how you grow them, actually will, will redu be reduced over time, even though you're going to be spending some money to keep innovating and building on there. Uh, okay, hopefully that helps a little bit. I don't have a, I said a really good solid answer for that. Okay, thank you for that. So for, for our uh, MSME participants, uh, you may uh, type additional questions or you may unmute to be recognized. So I think uh, some of our MSMEs are some quite uh, unfamiliar with the cloud computing. That's why I think uh, this uh, digital digitalks are very crucial in providing additional information to our MSMEs that would uh, help them in their digitalization journey. So probably uh, I think uh, if we if there are no more questions. Uh, probably we can ask Paul for uh, any words of encouragement or tips for our MSMEs uh, belonging to the micro sector that they uh, want to, to venture in this digitalization journey. To sure, uh, of course. Um, so words of wisdom. Um, first of all, know your customer. That's what matters. And when we had when we had a traditional face-to-face -face engagements, you think about how you interacted. You had that customer for only for a few minutes or whatever it took for them to come into your location, do the transaction, and leave. Right um, now, with digital transformation, you have your customers all the time. Right, and you want to engage them and continuously engage them in different ways. You want to understand them so that way you can you can engage them in what matters to them. So you want to make sure that you don't overmarket on things they don't care about. You want to focus on the things that matter to them. And everybody's different. So collecting this data, learning the interactions, um, and using your data that you already are collecting, it will let you get insights. And that's what I think the advantage is going to be for you. Now, to do that, you need to skill up your teams in, or maybe go to find a good partner or help build your solutions. That's the one thing you want to focus on. Also, just another note, on in my experience working with SMEs, when you're making a shift from on traditional infrastructure into a cloud-based infrastructure, also upskill the technology stack you're using. So a lot of customers I work with still run uh, older languages, you know, PHP, Laravel, for example, for hosting their web location, websites, and, and e-commerce platforms. Think about transforming into a more modern, um, agile, focused type um, languages that can help you in a, take, take advantage of a lot more innovation out there. Um, don't, you know, as you upskill your teams, upskill up, up upskill your application frameworks as well. Okay. Uh, thank you for that uh, words of wisdom. I hope our MSMEs were able to to uh, absorb your the words of wisdom. And uh, again, from the from our office, from the DTI, we thank you for uh, giving us your time and sharing your valuable knowledge pertaining to to cloud services and what does the what Amazon can provide to our MSMEs. Uh, and may we request our uh, participants to give Paul a virtual round of applause. And hopefully we can uh, again invite you and uh, your team from Amazon uh, Web Services in our future events. Thank you, Paul. Absolutely. And Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Godspeed. For our uh, participants, so... Uh, uh, may I remind again to kindly fill out the attendance for uh, today's session. You may also refer to our chat box.
So uh, right now, uh, may I introduce to you briefly the tech tools for MSMEs? Uh, at these challenging times, uh, uh, it is important uh, that uh, MSMEs uh, embrace uh, digitalization, uh, the need for innovation and increased adoption of digital technologies will be one of the means to put your business back on track from the challenges and difficulties uh, experienced from the pandemic and sustained economic growth, especially in the years to come. So in 20, March 2020, uh, the DTI launched the Tech Tools for MSMEs, which aims to provide information to MSMEs on the different technology tools, applications, platforms, and resources available in coping with the challenges and disruptions brought about by the community quarantine. So majority of, uh, or of the tools or solutions featured in our microsite are free while others have corresponding fees. They are categorized based on the functionality across multiple categories such as e-commerce, e-payment, digital marketing, logistics, work from home collaboration, and productivity tools. The site also uh, includes links to webinars, finding an expert, government resources for more information. The Tech Tools site can be viewed on the link provided in the slide, and you may also scan the QR code in our slide. Uh, but so before we proceed to our next topic, uh, let us have another activity. May I request again uh, our MSME participants uh, to answer another uh, our another question that we have on our poll. So our question is: uh, What process of business operation needs digitalization today? So as we all know, po, a majority of us were able to attend. Uh, almost the six episodes of MSME Digital Digitalk. So uh, uh, this poll, uh, we want to get your insights po kung uh, ano yung, yung, yung business operation nyo that you, you believe that needs to be digitalized in order to increase your competitiveness or expand your, your market. So Dito po sa ating poll, you can see that some have are answering po. Nandyan po yung marketing, online payments, payments, and shipping. So, uh, I think majority ng, ng mga, mga resource person uh, that we featured in the previous episodes have talked about marketing, online marketing, online payment. So, we... You just uh, we request you to continuously answer this, then we will get back to it later. Po. So uh, moving on, uh, the next topic uh, we will be presented by ROCPH, a digital marketing services, a startup digital service provider platform in web development online marketing and graphic design services for MSMEs and professionals. Our next speaker has over 10 years experience in IT, web development, virtual assistance, digital marketing, project management, and graphic design. With his skills, he was able to work on projects for local and international companies. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome the founder and CEO of ROC.ph, Digital Marketing Services, Mr. Ron Oliver Clarin, who will talk about uh, online marketing strategies for MSMEs. Magandang hapon po, Sir Ron. Hello, good afternoon din po, Sir Jawa. Sir, your, the virtual floor is yours po. Thank you. Okay, so I think sa, some of the attendees are um, is na, nakikita ko na rin um, from the previous um, events na natinan ko sa DTI. So, um, I'll share my screen. Um, sure. So, hello. Um, this is the first time that I've been talking to the national 
um, sector of DTI events. So I'll be talking about online marketing strategies for MSPs. So our story is with katulad po ninyo, um, bago po ako nag RMC.ps, isa po akong work at home at freelance, um, catering po majority of um, international companies. So, after that, um, I think on my early 20s, uh, pumunta ako sa DTI just to want to register kasi that's the, that's the time that um, year ata yun ng mga um, ni kaya tida mag-register yung mga freelancers or work at home professionals. So, doon na nag-start yung, um, yung new experience ko after ko mag-register kasi honestly, hindi ko talaga alam mag paano mag-register that time. But because of the DTI Cavite um, office, together with the lead staff there, um, they, do, they teach me ko ano yung reassess ng mga expenditure na assets and so on. So that's why um, after a few months, um, invited la ako sa FaceTime event. And doon ko na-realize na, o oh, nga, uh, um, there's something that we need to um to to solve or to address. So starting 2018, I I created a home office with virtual team and combined our uh, ex expertise and experiences. So I move um from international clients to local um businesses. Um, di ko renew mga contacts ko doon. I created that this sort of platform. So. Uh, and then we just launched by 2019 from zero clients and from time to time to matas and to matas yung mga client subscribers namin. So, um, so as of 2022, we have 1,500 client subscribers and um, yes, yung, yung na-mention ko na unang event na napuntahan ko, sa yung part of the Mentor Me um, program ng Batch 1 Calvite. And I began po ako na um, napakakataon to speak from the Region 4A ng Money and Market Encounter. At naging um, uh, isa po ako sa na-recognize ng Goni Gosho for 100 tech startups ng, ng Digital Summit. And last year po is ako po yung sa Region 4 po na nanalo po sa first runner of and national semifinals so Philippine Startup Challenge. And few months ago na um na feature tayo as a successful startup in Calabarzon and Mimaropa and last week po um uh, isa po ako sa or sa po kami na nakasama sa top 100 startup showcase po ng Kubo or Philippine Startup Week So ano nga ba talaga si RUC.ph So isa po kami marketing as a service or MAAS so, we're part of the Mark Tech or Marketing Tech Startup Industry where that you will um, subscribe na parang um, nagsasubscribe ka lang sa Netflix and you can send tasks to our team of graphic designer, marketing manager, developer, and VA and experts. So, I want you to experience um, um, by listening to me kung paano ba mag-start kay ROC.ph. So imagine ninyo, nag-subscribe kay ROC, click yung sign up button, and then nagbigay kayo ng information about your company, and, and we will be sending you the onboarding video experience to how to use the, the platform and how to talk with the team. And for example, itong November 24, 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. rather, uh, mag-schedule kayo ng monthly strategy call natin. And ito yung uh, monthly strategy call natin ngayon. So, um, so ano nga ba? Um, sometimes they are asking me, uh, ano yung difference ba ng website sa ng e-commerce? So, to, to tell you briefly, um, ang website is a if more information website. It can be portfolio website. It can be a um, brochure type um um, website na um, na main purpose lang is to give information and um and to give your um company information um so 
but the transac- transaction is will be take um on sending an email, live chat or sa Facebook page um messenger niyo. But the e-commerce is nandoon na po yung um by add to cart um and um check out and nandoon na kayo pipili na kayo ng payment options saka shipping options. And doon na rin magbabayad at doon na rin um, makakuha yung invoice. And then cycle for the on ordering and shipping process. Okay, so ano ba yung mga example natin for information website? Okay, so um, isang catalog, portfolio, um, blog or news. Um, so, and then may mga NGO websites tayo. So, mostly mga manufacturers na you just um want to have a list of their products and the portfolio if you are a caterer or construction um um company um so more yung mga nagawa na ninyo so sa blog naman um, more on sa mga na publish ng mga content at NGO for the yung mga social cost ninyo or donation website uh, website ninyo so um sa e-commerce naman we, we have a B2B B2C and C2C and government to business. So sa B2B to be uh, more sim- uh, more simple yung um uh, explanation ko is sila yung nakikipag-interact sa business then. And then um a bit do see um si business like Abbas Abenson um nakikipag um uh um binebenta nila ang mga consumers or mga individual buyers. Yeah, um, so meron din tayong B2 uh B2C sila sa and Shopee. Yeah, um, so but mostly B2B siya talaga. So and then C2C um consumer to consumer. So we have eBay, um amazon.com. So and sa GTB naman of uh, NBA in NBI so I think um um na experience ko yung pag pagasikas ng uh, registration ko sa sa DTI and sa ano so um everything is online so with assistance of of course nung sa provincial office kaya sobrang sobrang quick process to na encounter ko so uh, ano nga for the next thing is traditional versus website and e-commerce. Okay, so um, I know that most of you has been fulfilled your learning for the past days or weeks with the um, digital marketing. Ito, pahapiyaw na lang to. So, or kaya, so, the differences natin is sa traditional kasi pupunta ka sa, sa location ng, ng company and then um, Doon mo pala makukuha yung details ng products or services. Pero when you go to the website or e-commerce or digital marketing, I mean, um, isang click lang sa Facebook page messenger nila, o kaya um, email ka lang, um, it will be improved your customer service. At the same time, um, the difference on that is increase the revenue. Uh, because in traditional, you have to give your credit card or cash, Pero isang click lang na pay na, punta ka na agad sa, sa payment page and then choose the um, payment method and process the um, the payment on the preferred payment um, institutions na, na uh, parang ma-charge na yung, yung item or yung order mo. So, and then next is... Tradition of uh, access to international market. So um sometimes they are they're telling me, um, may na na encounter. I'm I'm still on the on the sector. Gusto ko ma-reach out yung salabas naman ng na area ko or ng uh, ng vicinity ko or market um uh, engagement ko. So because of the e-commerce, um, by using website or Facebook page, um, um, sabihin mo lang yung website mo or yung Facebook page mo, um, and then we visit to nila and they can know your 
what's uh, what are you selling or what you are um doing on your company and then uh, differences as a reputation and feedback so that is word of mouth si Maris, si Maris and si Marisol yung yung uh, parati nating um uh, sandalan ng mga ng mga information minsan malita yon so by means um by means of the e-commerce pwede mo na i-search yung company and pwede ka rin makakita ng mga reviews ng company niya so it can be positive and negative so all as always um kung meron bang kayo ma-receive na negative there's a room for improvements so and dapat ina-address yan in improve yan from, from time to time Okay, so um, about the man sa procurement and operation cost, um, sa traditional kasi you have the uh, managers, the assistant manager, the junior manager, the supervisor, 50 member, and then um, and layman um, staff mo. Yan, but in the e-commerce, pwede ka magiging uh, one-man team. I know my um, most of our clients are micro. Um, enterprise and uh, ilan lang yung mga um, key persons nila so we really understand that um yung uh, yung etong segment na to or slide na to so um so ngayon naman to the specific scenario ano ba yung mga preparing strategies for web development or sa website so for information website if you are choosing that um, we can have Wix, we can have Hub, Hub, um, HubSpot, WordPress.com uh, for the hosted. But if you want to pay um, a little um, a little bit, I, let's go with the WordPress and Joomla. So, um, and then you have your customized website. Um, and then most of these uh, platforms are mobile friendly or or expansive design kung tawagin namin sa tech side. So, um, so you can put your, your services or about page, your, your products and contact information, even your social media icons or pages pwedeng doon. So, when it comes to e-commerce, uh, um, for the hosted um, shopping cart platform, I suggest to have a Shopify big commerce and easy win. Yeah. So when it comes to self host hosted shopping card, um um you have WooCommerce, Virtual Mart and Magento. So at sa self hosted kasi you have to own a server like Amazon. Um so Amazon AWS to be specific. So but in hosted um you just sign up with them and then set up your page and that's it. So eh, most of this uh, platform that I've been um, discussed is mobile friendly or responsive to lot of devices. And so um, for digital marketing strategies, so number one is SEO. SEO is kapag merong kang synergy sa Google, um, sa Yahoo, sa Bing, um, Ito yung free, ito yung wala kang ads na, um, na um, binabayaran. Sa, so, one, so, kailangan yung isubmit yung website ninyo dito sa mga sa tatlong to yun, para um, mas, mas ma, uh, ma-maximize yung um, visibility ninyo sa, sa internet. And the same, and also yung mga page titles no mga no website niyo, it should be less than 65 characters with spaces. So um, and then backlinks um, we, uh, we can uh, co communicate with other friends that you, that have na merong website or blog, or kaya sa social media pages nila or personal page uh, account nila, they can share um, your website or blog and it can be increased um, vis uh, visibility and also meron tayong paid um, section then. So, um, 
eto if you want to pay uh, 500 pesos or 1,000 pesos for three days or so, depending on strategy mo, um, you can um, bid um, per view, per click, or per um, per cost, um, depending on sa campaign na available para sa mga um, paid search um, platforms. Okay, so next naman is SEO for maps. So, pa, so alam kong um, may mga um, traditional business tayo na may mga multiple stores. So, I suggest that um, kung free man or organic, we can um, create your business profile sa Google Map, sa Waze, and then sa Apple Map. Yan. So, para maging uh, yung extra point ninyo dun sa marker noon, mapupuntahan kayo. So, kapag merong gusto makapunta at hindi familiar sa, sa location ninyo, so, ito yung ano, yung map link namin and then pwede um, para um, tama yung yung pagkaka-road na pagpunta mo at hindi, at less hassle siya. Hindi ka na maki, magkikita nung sa mga street Bay Street and so on. So, make it sure na yung contact information ninyo is up to date. And always verify your Google Map yun, para naman na um, ma-maximize ninyo yung potential. And then, marketplace. So, we have, um, we can add your products on Lazada, Shopee, and eBay, and even in Amazon.com. So, these are products there. It should be more accurate yung description. Uh, kung ilang anong size, anong color, um, anong minsan texture pa, and then ano bang, last, ano bang pagkain to, kung ano bang lasa, yun. So, and then, there's also a paid ads dun sa mga um, platforms na to, which you can maximize and test for, for your results. Social media marketing. So, um, usong usong ngayon si TikTok. Yan. So, you can have a short video telling about your product, sharing your product. Ito yung product ko. Paano ba siya kainin? Kano ba siya kasarap kainin? Uh, and then kung, ba, kung um, things to, uh, paano ba siya gamitin? Yan. So, you can post it and I'm sure maraming mag-reviews niyan. Aside from TikTok, you have a Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, yaan. So, if ever na medyo marami yung um, um, social media accounts natin, we can have a scheduler. We can have a um, buffer, hootsuite, and Soho Social. Ito ay may mga free accounts din dito. So, di nyo naman kailangan mag-upgrade kung, kung di nyo pa naman kailangan yung mga additional features. So, when it comes on the paid naman, so we have Facebook ads, YouTube ads, and, and ads advertisements sa LinkedIn, Twitter, and TikTok. So, same lang naman sila like sa Google ads. So, um, may budget na, a little budget for the per campaign. Yan. So, um, uh, ito is um, athlete marketing program. So, that is one of the um, bonus picks that I can share. So, si athlete, mark, uh, athlete marketing is just like, um, like um, you can create an e-commerce website. And then, when um, there is a module na pwede nilang i-share yung website nila with a unique referral link. And when they click that, and then yung visitor or yung prospect nung ni affiliate, um, at bumili, Meron siyang commission doon at meron kang benta. So, um, ito pong athlete marketing is, um, is, call, um, is commission based. Ibig sabihin wala kang babayaran registration fees um, or wala kang, um, yung athlete mismo walang babayaran. Ang babayaran lang dapat ni company or ni MSF yung completed na order from the e-commerce store na, na meron ka. So, matutrack mo na, matutrack naman yun sa e-commerce store mo. So, this is one of the um, 
good strategy when you have a e-commerce store kasi um, it's a win-win situation eh. Daan. So so after that um the strategies is um share, share your products and services choose website ba or e-commerce yung kailangan mo and then with our strategy, strategy call um and marketing options uh, we can finalize kung ano ba yung task i-add natin sa platform na task for implementation so kapag na na-add na siya sa sa platform yung mga task based on our call so automatically um gagawin niyo ng team at kapag natapos yung task number one, automatically task number two, hanggang maubos namin yung task since that we are offering a limited task or a limited graphic design and online marketing and and others like website and NBA at um, team services. So sometimes may mga ino- innovative ideas sa mga clients, they can send um, their, um, their things that they wanted and then we will be let know the client if, if kaya ba ng team or, or pwede siyang going task. So as fast as 72 hours, we can done with the, with the, front, with the task. So, as a, as a part of this event, um, we are giving a one free basic plan for free. Um, just use the code DDI Digitox. Um, so hanggang November 30 lang po ito. <laughs> yeah, and so we will be, uh, um, so you will, you will be waiving 500 pesos per one month and you can get a limited online marketing consultation and graphic design. Um, para sa business niyo, and then um, if you um time to decided na you just click the 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 pricing on our website sa ROC.ph and um click continue and put that DTI Digitox um and valid and click the validate code. So automatically makikita niyo yung 100% one time discount at magiging zero siya. So and fill up your information or your intake form. And that's it. Uh, we will have a uh, consultation na and and you can list down all the tasks like business card, brochure, minsan yung signage nila pinapagawa sa amin product labels. Yeah, uh, so Anything graphic design na preparing uh, uh, an online marketing consultation na uh, uh, with a ten more than ten strategies. So um, thank you, and I'm hoping that uh, we can uh, we can help your business grow um, to um, to to digital world. Thank you, thank you, sir and ma'am. Thank you, Sir Ron. No, so, napaka-generous ni ROC.ph. Meron po tayo, may binigay silang code para ma- magkaroon tayo ng feel ng kanilang services uh, pertaining to digital marketing. So, maganda yung kanina, parang na-mention ni Sir Ron, no? parang startup siya. So, meron lang siyang skill nung una, tapos kinonvert niya ito on into a business no so ngayon uh, ano na pa, regular na po siya ng DTI as mentor At the same time uh, maganda rin po kasi yung naging experience or yung journey ni Sir Ron ng company niya dahil from small nagiging lumaki na po sila at the same time yung yung value nila is to also help yung mga micro and small enterprises in their marketing uh, uh, marketing concerns and challenges. So sig- siguro sir on uh, probably uh, hindi po question no parang uh, siguro question na nga uh, or you can share your your experience po sa karamihan po ba ng mga clients niyo especially yung mga nagsisimula pa pa lang no walang idea uh, ano ba uh, website informational website ba o e-commerce transaction na. Usually, paano nyo po dinadiagnose kung anong service ang dapat sa'yo uh, or ganito yung kailangan mo? Paano nyo parang uh, ina-assess yung isang isang SME or micro 
na wants to expand by using the different uh, digital marketing channels or platforms. Okay, so I think that is a very tricky question of the that na receivable for past years. Um, so um, when we do strategy call, um, there's always a um, uh, we want to know more about the business. Uh, sometimes we we really don't uh, they they don't really don't give more information, just the overview, the products and services. So. Kung ano yung nakuha namin information, yun yung na um, um yun yung binabase namin dun sa strategy na, na bibigay namin na options. So, um one of the things that when we say website, um, um may mga clients kami na encounter na um na um they, they are good or they go, they go for it. But but um, always um think of that that kapag may website just like on your Facebook page, um kailangan yung kailangan siya ina update from time to time, yeah, um, so that's why um um at the same time um, if every naman na e-commerce um yon hindi lang siya update it should be pati yung products and services mo kailangan mo i-update don kung merong kang bagong product kailangan mo siyang i-add. Kung nagtaas ka ng presyo, kailangan mo siyang i-add. Or kung meron kang promotions, kailangan mo siyang i-add dun sa website, sa e-commerce mo. So, para naman, updated parati yung um, yung clients mo. Um, when it comes to na kapag meron kang um, promotions or mga bago na nangyayari sa, sa, sa business mo, at doon nila nakikita yung sincerity na eto um meron tong improvements merong innovations na bago na nangyayari at uh, mas lalo pa silang bibili sa ng mga products or services mo it's about um um it depends on the client how, how willingness or readiness siya sa 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 marketing start options na binibigay namin during the start strategy call Ayun, thank you sir Ron. No? Sa ating mga MSME participants, uh, feel free to type in your question or probably raise your hand para to be recognized. So while waiting for that, may another question po tayo. No? Uh, since yung social media talagang isang way of uh, marketing your service or your product, so, ano naman po? Maybe you can share some uh, insights. Yung what are the, some of the common social media social media marketing mistakes that businesses make? No, kasi parang syempre libre po yan. Gawa ka lang ng isang video na TikTok. You can ano na eh, pwede ka na makakuha ng uh, maka-capture ng market, no? Pero yun nga, uh, ano po ba? Paano po ba based on your experience? Uh, dapat ba magdepend ka lang entirely sa social media marketing or you is it uh, uh, talagang recommended pa rin to maintain your uh, either informational website or e-commerce website okay so i really understand that um some of the um msm um yung consistency yeah when it comes on the website, is nagkakaroon ng issues. Mas lalo na yung nagkaroon ng pandemic. Yan. So, um, we, uh, we tried um, our best to give options uh, for the website para ma-maintain. Ma Kasi yung domain, um, yung, uh, for example, aruti.ph o kaya dti.gov.ph yan. So, habang tumatagal yan, it will be um, give you more um, visibility. Yan yung mga one of the good um um things para sa sa website mo so on um, pero to answer your question um kung gaano ba ka ano sa, sa social media um ano ba yung mga top mistakes wrong category so on um, they um they they put cooperative because they're cooperative but they are selling you know, um let let's say fruits it should be added also yung fruits and vegetables kung may vegetables yeah on so 
Um, I uh, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, you can choose three to five categories. So you can maximize that. Yon para mas um mas maret ba targeted mo or the targeted mo yung a uh, yung uh, yung niche na gusto mo or yung market na gusto mo. At the same time, give information um on what you're offering. Not uh uh wag niyo naman pong bigyan kami ng parang lengthy na parang pati yung bylaws nandoon. Yeah, so um may, may na experience po kami ganoon. Uh, we we give that um suggestion to the client um and then luckily they listen because we don't um we don't ask na gawin mo to, gawin mo yan. Um, no, we we give options. And as a client pa rin yung approval niyon. So and then uh when you go to the cover photo, make sure that you added your products or and then your contact information. Not just uh sometimes I'm seeing face. Um 60% ng face ng owner, 40% yung product. It should be back baliktad. It should be 60% um yung products and 40% yung kung sino yung team or yung kung ano yung contact information para um para mas showcase mo yung products and services mo nang maayos at yun yung ay, ito yung page na to na para sa prutas o kaya para sa sa um marshmallow or kaya snacks so doon pa lang nakikita natin yung products and services niyo and um yun po. and then always um um schedule at least once or twice um a week post yun kasi meron ako na encounter isang beses lang sa dalawang linggo uh, kaya naman sa isang buwan isa o dalawang beses lang so i think um um you can maximize um that potential and yun po yun po yung mga pwede kong and then don't forget the hashtags mm-hmm. okay thank you sir uh since uh wala na rin pong question and to manage our time also uh check nyo rin po sa ating mga msme participants pinos ni sir ron as uh, sir sir ron yung yung code no yung D- DTI Digitox uh si- yung ano na lang sir uh words of wisdom or yung uh, mga payo sa ating mga MSMEs as they venture uh into the digitalization journey no uh, mm-hmm. pro- we can request po uh, a words of wisdom from you sir okay so i um i think one of the um two takes um first um if we started and i know there's a ups and downs especially on pandemic um, um we can post but never stop because when you stop um like um um ma- ma- like yung one year kang hindi update yon, or six months there will be a um one um to a uh, one way discussion it should be a two way discussion with your with your um market marketers para alam namin kung paano namin matutulungan kayo to uh, to your challenges sa businesses so um always um give your customer an update yeah um, so i know of our rules is giving automated updates but on the micro you can send text message or email um one by one still me uh, um one by one email i mean or kaya naman sa facebook gc may create kayo ng gc like we did so on gc para ma um para on time na merong tanong si client um mag- mabilis siya masagutin naghihintay lang kami mag- ng sagot aside sa follow ups ng na ano na namin so given a uh, given take yan so i hope that um from step one step two you have to increase one by one with your marketing ideas but i know that sometimes to give on the first day you you have lots of ideas but make it some plan for this a six months plan 12 months plan and everything will work Yon, very well said po, Sir Ron. Thank you for that uh, words of wisdom. 
so again, thank you, Sir Ron. Uh, we appreciate for your time in sharing your valuable information on online marketing strategies, yung mga tips, and yung, yung providing us an information on the ROC.ph digital marketing services. So sa ating mga participants, uh, can we give Sir Ron a virtual round of applause? And hopefully in the future events of DTI, we can still uh, uh, invite you as our resource person. Maraming salamat po, Sir Ron. So uh, at this moment, uh, we have a message of support from our regional director from Region 10, Northern Mindanao, who will share uh, with us on their digital initiatives that could help us inspire uh, to shift to digitalization. Ladies and gentlemen, our regional director for Region 10, uh, regional director Ermejo. Pleasant day to everyone. To Director Emma Asusano of ETI Bureau of Small and Medium Enterprises Development, colleagues from ISMED, regional and provincial offices of DTI, MSMEs, guests, maayong adlaw sa tanan. I would like to congratulate BISMED for introducing MSME DG Talks. This effort emphasized the role of digitalization in DTI's direction to upgrade, upskill, and upsize MSMEs under the leadership of DTI Secretary Alfredo E. Pascual. The inclusion of digitalization in the growth of our MSMEs is one of the lessons we attained during the pandemic. We underwent difficult conditions at the height of the pandemic, which prompted a redirection of consumer behavior and, as a result, affected business operations. We addressed these gaps by bringing our services closer to the community. During the pandemic, we shifted our trainings and seminars online to continue capacitating MSMEs in enhancing their skills in business. Sessions on social media marketing, including how to manage a Facebook page, how to create marketable contents, and how to take creative product photos, among others, were offered. We assisted MSMEs in collaborating with last mile delivery services to bring their products to the market despite the movement restrictions of the community quarantine. We successfully produced graduates under the Capacit Mentor Me Money Market Encounter, which was developed as a practical delivery mechanism for the same mentorship modules to be used to propel MSMEs to survive and thrive in spite of the unprecedented setbacks. DTI Region 10 also launched the Kahimunan.com to help the assisted MSMEs to have an online platform where they can advertise their products for free. And in line with the conduct of Kahimunan Virtual Trade Fair 2020-2021, Live selling of local products were conducted to further promote and boost sales of MSMEs. We have had our share of stories from MSMEs who successfully navigated their businesses digitally. Fast forward to today, we welcome our economic recovery by bringing back our activities physically but we still continue to acknowledge that digitalization remains to be an important step for the MSMEs. The MSME DigiTox is an insightful platform for our MSMEs to learn in order to become competitive and resilient in the digital world. Topics on productivity tools, e-commerce trends, lending apps, and more introduce a new world for our MSMEs to explore and try. With this, I would like to congratulate again the BISMEN and convey the office's support in this initiative. We thank you for opening a door of opportunity for our MSMEs. We also challenge our MSMEs who are eager to learn 
on digital transformation to never lose confidence in embracing changes. We can make it happen. Thank you and maayong adlaw. Thank you very much, DTI Region 10, for that enlightening message for our MSME participants. Thank you, RD Abang, for sharing your digitalization efforts in your region. For sure, a lot of MSMEs here are taking note of the benefits that your MSMEs have experienced through digitalization. So for our last but not the least presenter for today's episode, uh, we have invited No Code Philippines to talk about the No Code Philippines community that seeks to empower the no code and low code community in the Philippines. Our next speaker is the founder of Estel, a no code product studio making app and website for startups and small businesses worldwide. Uh, she earned her computer science degree from UP Diliman with a focus on web science. However, she discovered her love for no code development through her side project, Three Things Daily, a no-code app that helps people become more grateful. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the founder of No Code Philippines, Miss Crystal Camarao. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, Pa. Uh, ma'am, the virtual floor is yours, Pa. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me share my screen. Kita po ba? In screen ko. Just wanted to confirm. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, you ma'am. Okay, sige. Thank you po. Um, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. Today, I'll be talking about something I'm very passionate about, no-code and low-code. I'll be giving a short intro on what no-code and low-code are and how they'll play a big part of our future. I'll also show you how magical no-code can be as we build together a simple no-code app. Lastly, I'll try my best to answer your questions. Now, let me start by asking you to use your imagination just for a couple of seconds. Let's imagine a world where 99.7% can read, but only 0.3% can read and write. Only a tiny, tiny fraction of that world can write. In fact, only one in every 333 and one third of people can write. Now, if I were to guess, that world would be very, very, very boring. Am I right? It would be a kind of world where we limit progress. It would be a kind of world where we limit creativity and innovation. It would be a kind of world where we limit the world from reaching its full potential. Now let's go back to the present reality because I have an important statistic for you. Today, in the whole world, only 0.3% can write code. Let me repeat. Today, in the whole world, only 0.3% can write code. Only a tiny, tiny fraction of, the world, of our world can write code. In fact, only one in every 333 and one third of people can write code. Now, you need to be able to write code to make software. Software essentially runs on code. And today, we are increasingly becoming dependent on software. Just the fact that you are right now in this meetup means you have to grow on your computer, which uses an operating system such as window, Windows. That software runs on code. Then you have to open your browser, such as Firefox, to get the meetup link. That software runs on code. Then you needed to launch Zoom to view this talk. That software runs on code. And because only 0.3% of the world can write the code for the software that we are highly dependent on, we live in a kind of world where we limit progress. We live in a kind of world where we limit creativity and innovation. We live in a kind of world where we limit the world from reaching its full potential. That is, until now. Traditionally, you need to spend hours and hours and hours writing code just to make software. A lot of resources are involved. And that's even assuming you know how to write code or can afford to hire developers. But that is quickly changing thanks to no code and low code. With no code and low code, you don't need to spend a ton of hours to make software. Not a lot of resources are involved. And the best part is you don't even need to code at all. What then is no code? 
No code in its simplest definition means product building and automation without writing a single line of code. Let me emphasize, without writing a single line of code. How is this possible? It's possible through the use of visual methods where the code is generated for you. You don't even need to know the kind of programming languages, frameworks, etc. that the code generated uses. All you need to do is drag and drop, drag and drop. No code leads to the rise of citizen developers or developers who have little to no knowledge about coding. Even without any knowledge of code, citizen developers can develop software and automate things through the power of no code. This is what makes no code different from low code. Low code is similar to no code, but it is primarily for developers. Unlike no code, low code requires writing code. However, the code required is just minimal. Now, why should you care about no code and low code? Let me give you the three biggest reasons why. The first reason is that no code and low code make development accessible to everyone. No code and low code lower the barriers to entry and level the playing field. Today, anyone with a computer, an internet connection, and a bit of know-how can make software, opening the door for many new solutions to be created. Everyone, no matter what age, gender, nationality, etc., etc., can now develop software. No longer is an elite few making an impact at the world at large through software. Literally everyone in this talk can become a citizen developer and develop software. The second reason is that no-code and low-code make development much faster. With no-code and low-code, a significant amount of time is saved. In fact, survey reports show that no-code and low-code reduce development time by up to 90%. Anyone can now develop software in a matter of weeks, days, even hours. No longer do we need to dedicate a huge amount of time building something. This leads to an increase in efficiency and productivity. The third reason is that no-code and low-code make development more affordable. There's no need for a fancy or complicated tech stack or even a huge team of developers. No-code and low-code enable you to build the solution with just a few simple tools and yourself. Anyone can now develop software without much capital. No longer do you need to raise a huge chunk of money. It is now cheaper and easier for anyone to create startups or expand a business or even just build a simple side project. Now, what can you do with no code and low code? No code can be used, no code and low code can be used to make websites, apps, automation, and other solutions that require the use of technology. Want to share the, all the info you know about a certain K-pop star on a website? You can use no code to build something like that. Want to keep track of all the anime shows you've ever watched in an app? you can use no code to build something like that. Want to automatically repost every video by your favorite TikToker? You can use no code to build something like that. But the best use of no code for me are minimum viable products or MVPs for startups. Essentially, the idea is to make the most basic version of your product. It doesn't have to be perfect. What matters most is that you can get feedback as early as possible and iterate on that feedback. A good example is Uber. Initially called Uber Cab, it was an iPhone app that was meant to connect the users with cab drivers and offer them a way to make payments via a credit card. The MVP version did not offer any other features. It was only after the app received significant downloads that Uber added features like live location tracking of drivers, automated payment system via in-app wallet, cost estimation, fair splitting, and more. In short, only after validation did they start investing on other features. What does that have to do with no code? No code enables you to easily and quickly make an MVP, similar to one, the one Uber made, enabling, enabling you to validate your idea first before investing a lot of time and money. You can establish product market fit first because, before going all in on your idea. As a startup founder, you will save so much time and headaches by creating a no-code MVP. You don't even need to look for a tech co-founder or expert to help you build out your idea. Instead, you can build your own startup using no-code tools, allowing you to validate your assumptions and start serving your target market, customers and markets as soon as possible. And the power of no-code is not just limited to building out your idea. No-code can also help you improve your own workflows. For example, you can use no-code tools to automate tasks, saving you a lot of time and effort. Tools like Zapier allow you to connect several apps together. You can automatically add anyone who emails your startup to your customer relationship management or CRM, such as Salesforce, or push Twitter mentions of your startup to a Slack channel. 
or get the latest news about the startup world by having new items of our RSS feed sent to you as an SMS. With no code and low code, there are plenty of opportunities. And because it is disrupting the world at large, you don't want to get left behind. Because evidence suggests that the future is no code and low code. Why do I say that? For starters, here's an overview of some popular no code tools and how much they're worth right now. The fact that investors are highly are highly interested in these no code tools is it is a good indicator that it is a growth it is a growing market. What's more, Gartner, a research firm, predicts that more than half of medium to large enterprises will use no code and low code as one of their strategies by next year, 2023. Even more importantly, Gartner predicts that more than 65% of all activity related to app development will use low code by 2024, two years from now. Forrester, another research firm, predicts a compound annual growth rate of 44.49% for the low code market. From $3.8 billion in 2017, it will be worth $21.2 billion by this year. It is safe to assume then that no code and low code in the coming years will be mainstream and that they are here to stay. We can probably even guess that for our kids and grandkids, no code and low code will become basic life skills. No code and low code's impact on our world is inevitable. But here's the part where I emphasize that no code and low code are not meant to replace code. It's, un and it's unwise to assume otherwise. No code and low code will coexist with code in the future primarily because they serve different needs. Low-code and low-code are, are best for simple, out-of-the-box solutions that require minimal customization. And for things that are a bit more complex and are highly specialized, you will need custom code. Low-code and low-code still aren't as customizable or flexible as code. Which probably leads you to think, is there actual proof that low-code and low-code work in the real world? I'm glad you asked because there are plenty of the examples of how no code and low code have achieved success. Today, let me give you three examples. My first example is Lambda School. Lambda is a Y Combinator box startup, and for the first iteration of their products, of their product, they used a variety of no code tools such as Typeform, Zapier, Calendly, and the Learn Dash plugin on WordPress. Using only these tools, they were able to raise their Series A and B funding and serve about 3,000 students. Today, its valuation is more than $200 million, and they still use no code as part of their arsenal. Interestingly enough, Lambda School is a coding school. The fact that it uses no code proves the value that no code can have. My second example is Coins. Coins is a platform that helps you pay off your financial debts. The first version of their product uses a no code platform called Bubble and Bubble only. Today, they have helped pay off more than $16 million in debt and raised about $1.5 million in funding. While they have now redone certain aspects with additional code, code, Coin still runs primarily on Bubble. Notably, Nate Washington, its founder and CTO, predicts that no-code startups will skyrocket in the future. My last and favorite example comes from Vlad Magdalene, co-founder and CEO of Webflow. New Story Charity was started by a group of people who went to Haiti after a huge disaster and found a lot of homeless people. They decided to help by creating a crowdfunding site. The problem? They didn't know how to code, so they used to upload a no-code website builder. First, they raised money for one family, then tens of families, families, eventually hundreds of families. Today, they have raised hundreds of millions of dollars and are 3D printing homes. This example shows the kind of huge impact no-code has on our world. Now, you may be curious, how does no code actually work? Let me give a short demo on how to make a simple to-do list app on Adalo. So, um, first, this, so this is the Adalo interface, and I'll be creating a new app, okay? And then we can choose with a native mobile app and desktop web app, but for the purposes of this demo, we'll do a native mobile app. And there are already templates available for you to do it easier. In fact, there's already a to-do list template, but we're gonna start with a blank one. And then we'll name this as to-do list app. And we can change the colors. For example, um, we can have blue and maybe pink. Okay. And then we'll create. Once it's created, there's already an automatic, um, there's already an automatic login and sign up screen. So we don't have to do that. And um, I'll be sharing a copy on the group chat 
so that you can also test the to-do list app that we're making. Um, okay. So this is, so you can test it using this app, okay? So sign up and log in, they already work. So let me just share, let me just um, show it to you. So let me sign up. Okay. And then you can, so let's log out, then we can try to log in. So if you already have an account, um, we can try to log in. Sorry, my my keyboard is not working. Let me do something about that. Okay, so log in, and then um, you can already log in. So. For the purposes of this app, we'll only do a simple to-do list. So first, we'll create a new screen, um, a form screen, okay? And we'll add this as add task, okay? So um, first, let's do a task collection. So it, this is in the database, okay? Task collection. Then it will have a name and a true or false property, whether it's done or not. And it will also have an owner. So it will have a relationship to the user. And this is sometimes confusing, but we'll skip the part about um, what is many, many to many one to one relationships and databases. But basically, this is what we're going to choose. A user can have multiple tasks, of course, because it is a to do list app. They can have more than tasks. But a task belongs only to one user because um, the other users will have different tasks. So done. And then this form will be a task data collection. And what you want the form to do, create new task. Okay. So the fields we will mark is as we'll remove the done. And after the submit button, we'll link it back to the home screen. Okay. Does everyone follow so far? And then here is we'll show the list of to-do list. So it's just a simple list. Okay. Um, I'll add a heading here. I'll add a heading here um, to tasks not done. Okay. And it is a list of tasks, but it's filtered that only the login user's task because, of course, they can't view, you can't view the other person's tasks. And we'll add another custom filter and it's done is false because we said that this is not yet done, right? And then we'll just um, add a few things here, remove this, then we'll remove the left section. So it's basically just that, okay? Then um, we can add, um, we can add a left section here but that's, it's not an avatar, it's a checkbox, okay? So it's a checkbox. And what will happen? If, if it's clicked, then it will update the current task and the current task will be marked through, okay? Does everyone follow so far? And then we'll add a new task here, tasks done. And we'll create a simple, uh, a similar list, except, except it will be a list of tasks. Again, it will be filtered to only the login user's tasks because you can't view the other people's tasks. Then um, we'll remove the side title, we'll change the left section to an icon and we'll change it into a um, mark task to show that it is now um, done. So we'll pick a green color for that. Oh, wait, sorry. Why am I choosing that? Okay, so it's a green color, so it marks done. And then we can mark it as undone again. And, um, 
will mark it as false if it's chosen okay and then sorry i forgot to filter that it should only be done is true so now if we do a refresh of the app we're done with our simple to do list uh, sorry i forgot we need to add a simple action button here a simple action button here to to link to the um add task screen okay again sorry um yeah so now it's so right now there's no task not done there's no task done because we haven't chosen anything but for example ah uh, sorry why is that add task is that here fields Sorry, there seems to be a bug here because hmm, that's weird. Because there's only two fields here. Let's try again. There seems to be a bug. Okay, there. So for example, buy pizza. Then we'll create task. Then Obviously, it will sh show up in tasks not done. And then, for example, let's buy, let's um, do laundry, you know, let's add do laundry, create task. And then, um, again, it will show up in tasks not done because it's not yet done, it's our to-do list. If we mark it as buy pizza as done, it's going to go back here. And if we mark this as do laundry, it's also going to go here. But if we, we make it we, so that you can uncheck it. So if we undo do laundry it's um it's gonna mark that so that's our um now hopefully i've gotten you excited about no code and low code and you're wondering how to get started the best time to get started is right now and the fact that you're in this talk is a good start but let me also give you my five best tips on how to learn no code and low code my first step is to learn the basics. No code and low code may be easier, but they do not eliminate the application of logic. No code and low code also still require the knowledge of certain things like database schema and the use of REST APIs. So you still need to learn some fundamentals related to coding. Moreover, I highly recommend learning other skills like UX design, because as you probably know, your software is as only as good as your user experience. My second tip is to know the tools. There are tons and tons of tools out there, and more are being added every day. In the interest of time, we won't be able to compare and contrast each one of them. So please do your own research, especially since every use case will require a different tool or set of tools. But if you want to quickly get your hands dirty, my best recommendation is Adalo, which is what we used earlier. Adalo is intuitive and easy to use, and even has a free tear for you to play around with. My third tip is to find resources. I don't need to tell you that you can easily Google no-code tutorials or that YouTube is full of videos on how to do certain things using no-code. However, in my experience, the best place to start is the official documentation of whatever tool you are using. And if you've searched the whole internet and still can find a solution to your problem, your best bet is to ask in their official support forums. My fourth tip is to make a project. I believe that the best way to learn no-code and low-code is by doing. You don't need to have a grand idea right away. It can be just as simple as an Instagram clone or an inventory management for the books you own at home. What's more important is that you are interested in the idea, enough for you to be motivated to get past the initial learning curve. By producing an output, not only will you learn how to do no-code and or low-code, you will be inspired to make more projects because now you have something to show for your effort. My last and favorite tip is to join a community. Joining a community helps you grow, enables you to network and engage with like-minded people, and gives you the opportunity to ask for support and valuable feedback from people who can help you. And I started a community that seeks to empower no-coders and low-coders in the Philippines. No-code PH has a Discord server and Telegram group, a website to showcase no-code apps you've built, and regular meetups where you can meet and connect with fellow more no, fellow no-coders. No Even more importantly, we have events where you can learn more about no-code and low-code from experts. And we already had a challenge where they competed and win prizes by building no-code apps. And we'll have more um, challenges in the future. 
Best of all, it's completely free and forever will be. In fact, we just registered no code PH as a nonprofit, and we're we're looking for volunteers, and we're um expanding. Uh, we're we're ex we're going to have our first um in person meetup. As I end this talk, let me share a personal story. Three Things Daily is a side project of mine. It's basically a digital gratitude wall where every day you can share three things you're grateful for. I made it because I had a mission to spread the practice of gratitude as much as possible after experiencing firsthand how it made me ha happier and healthier. Three Things Daily has a web app and mobile app, the core functionalities of which I built in only a few days last year using Adalo. And today, with minimal marketing, there have been more than 2,200 posts made by over 500 people from all over the world. And this is the kind of feedback I received from this initiative. If I can make a side project within a short amount of time that somehow positively impacts the lives of other people, so can you. You have a unique set of abilities, a unique set of ideas, a unique set of experiences, which combined with the power of no-code and low-code can positively change the world. As I've shown you today, the future is no-code and low-code. My question now to you is, do you want to be part of that future? Because no code and low code are waiting for you to spark innovation, solve problems, positively impact the lives of other people. And it is this potential that makes me absolutely love no code and low code. I really appreciate your time and appreciation uh, attention today. Thank you so much. And if you need help with anything no code or like low code, please don't hesitate to reach out to me through email or Twitter DM. I'd love to help you out. So yo, thank you, Miss uh, Crystal, for that very informative uh, presentation and emphasizing on the the opportunities of uh, venturing into the no code and low code. So, siguro one of the question, uh, ano po, lingering the minds of our MSME participants. How does the parang no code uh, PH or no code community? Help me in my uh, business or in my digitalization journey. Um, yeah, so that's a good question. No, um, no code PH, um, as I mentioned, just registered as a nonprofit, and our our main thrust is advocacy, like this okay. one, like talks like this one, talking about. Um, so first, making no code known to Filipinos, to fi people in the Philippines. Second of all, equipping them with the knowledge and skills needed to harness the power of no-code and low-code. And then lastly, giving them a support network. Like, for example, um, they have a particular no-code question and they can, um, they can ask the community for valuable feedback or help. Yeah. So, uh, uh, as a follow-up question, parang does, uh, for example, an individual or an MSME wants to uh, join the community, does he or she needs to have the digital skills to be able to, to be uh, uh, parang accepted in the community? No. So, uh, as I mentioned, we want to make no code accessible to anyone and everyone. We want to empower citizen developers. So, even if um, you don't have any technical background. So we've had people, for example, who didn't necessarily have technical background, but were able to make no-code apps with the help of no-code PH. So that is our main mission. Okay. Really. Thank you. So uh, another question, uh, one question in our chat box coming from Dell. Does it enhance our, that, or maybe it does, can it, can it enhance our sales in the future? For sure. So depending on um, which no-code tool that you use. So I already mentioned Adalo. So you can build an Adalo app for your business or a website builder, like as I mentioned also earlier, Webflow. So um, traditionally, you need to hire people to make the website for you. But with no-code, like to, to actually code the website from scratch, right? Okay. But now with the rise of no-code site builders, you can build a website for your company, for your MSME, using these no code tools and you don't need like you don't need to know um you don't need to know how to write code you just drag and drop so and then as i mentioned also earlier you can use zapier to automate processes in your um in your 
company. So for example, um, you want to automate emails. Hi, thank you for buying from our store. So those are the kind, um, no code has like so many no use code. cases. It has many use cases and um, the possibilities are like, there's so many possibilities of what you can achieve through no code. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I think, uh, our, for example, our, our MSMEs have this parang dilemma uh, after hearing your, your presentation on the capability of uh, uh, going into the no-code uh, journey. So uh, I think one, one option is to get the services of providers. Then another is to code... Uh, uh, use the no code uh, uh, application or platform so uh ang, ang question ko po is uh, when is or what would be the the deciding factor or or, or element that would uh, that should uh, help our msme uh, in deciding that i uh, ako i need to instead of uh, availing the services of platform providers uh, maybe I can try the the platforms like Adalo to to create simple uh, tools for my business. For sure, no. Um, I think um, it's really more of like first decide or like analyzing what your needs are and what you what your time and money capabilities are. Because if you don't have much money. Obviously, it's gonna be expensive to to hire developers, but um, if you um, if you're willing to give the time and go past the initial learning curve, then for sure, I think using no code and low code is a no brainer, especially in the initial stages of your startup, because um, it will be very expensive to outsource to developers like so much more expensive that's why sometimes you know you have you think you have a good idea but you haven't um validated yet that idea so no code is a good way to like validate the idea first so it can be just a simple landing page for example okay so yon uh thank you very much ma'am uh crystal for that uh very informative presentation <laughs> And uh, hopefully, uh, our MSME participants were enlightened no? that there's always uh, another option, not just uh, by uh, employing uh, the service providers, but uh, they, uh, they there's the, themselves can try uh, exploring other options like the being able to create their own uh, uh, tools to, for their business. So, uh, yun, uh, siguro sa ating mga MSME participants, uh, may we uh, request for a virtual uh, uh, round of applause for Miss Crystal Camarao from No Code Philippines. So, thank you po, Ma'am Crystal, and hopefully uh, we can invite you in our future events. Uh, uh, I think you have shared na po your contact or yung details dito no for those who are who will be interested in knowing more about the the community and your your company thank you ma'am crystal thank you then po thank you thank very you much po. god bless po So uh, thank you, Paul, and uh, we have come to the end of our sixth episode of MSME Digitox, focusing on on-demand IT services and tools. Uh, we would like to thank our speakers today, uh, Mr. Sears, Mr. Clarin, and Ms. Caramau, Camarau, for sharing their valuable insights. Thank you for helping us become more aware of the various solutions that your company offers in terms of on-demand IT services and tools. And we greatly appreciate the time you spent with us uh, this afternoon. Uh, we also thank our MSMEs for joining us today. And we hope that you have learned and be able to check out the platforms that have been presented. We hope that you would 
uh, take advantage of these learning sessions provided by the DTI that would help your businesses grow and overcome challenges. We also thank our DTI regional focal persons for the commitment to assist our MSMEs and working with us together in support to adopt digitalization. We appreciate your time, effort, and hard work. You can join us again for our last session of the DigiTalks uh, next Thursday, December 1, for the seventh and final episode for this season. Uh, before we leave, kindly please accomplish the customer satisfaction form or CSF via the link in the chat box. And also the survey form for those who have not yet uh, accomplished the survey. We will issue the certificates to those who have attended at least four topics in any session and have completed filling out our CSF. Again, thank you everyone and see you again next Thursday. Uh, keep safe po and God bless.